the one constant question everybody kept asking me there was doesn't india have a national sound archive and you know as a student of music as a student of history and more so as an indian i think it was deeply embarrassing for me to s- tell them that no we don't have one such institution we must have some kind of a uh, archive of important songs or famous songs from after the time of our independence that maybe went platinum or like were chart busters yeah pre post independence lot no but there's no such uh, institution in india at all you have the national film archives in pune but a national sound archive for recordings which predate uh, the advent of films uh, we don't have in india and so for the longest time so i'd learned a lot of the technology of the digitization how it's done how would you do it which is the real question because you know so I, with the record player i had also had an option to convert the record into a bluetooth file huh, huh. Uh, sorry convert the record to an mp3 file not a wave file exactly but an mp3 file that i could then transfer using bluetooth yeah yeah it yeah. had that feature correct if you can't watch a full podcast watch a clip instead you'll be as entertained and as informed that's my guarantee that's why you got to subscribe to those cast clips so so uh, after coming back this was 2000 12 13 that i'm uh, talking about mm-hmm. 2011 12 uh, almost 13 years ago that was when i tried with the you know previous government of india saying you know we need to establish a national sound archive and i'll help you do this uh, but the government you know never shows any interest in most things uh, and so that was when by chance i met mr tv mohandas pai uh, who was then with infosys and he said why you want to run behind all these stupid governments so you Uh, start something of your own and i'll provide the initial seed capital for mm-hmm. it and so with that uh, in 2011 uh, i established the archive of indian music uh, it's probably india's first digital sound archive for vintage gramophone records uh, and since then to now and we uh, uh, you know imported all the machines required for high fidelity sound transfer uh, from america from uh, europe and other places uh it was a small scale venture uh which uh, a technician was there doing this and i also realized that there's no point keeping it to myself because it's not my property uh, it's somebody yeah. has recorded somebody has sung and performed uh, who am i to uh, this thing so we managed to rescue close to 15000 records uh, all lying in chor bazaars raddi shops you, how did you rescue them go physically it place to place buy them buy them yeah with the money that was given sometimes some people donated some i bought it was like literally i was the glorified raddiwala myself so I, where did you keep all of these so we have a, we had a space then which mr pai had given okay. to us okay and you had 15000 records yeah, there you still have yeah we still do you still have all these records yeah 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 <laughs> and these range from classical hindustani and carnatic music also folk music from various parts of india uh theater recordings very interestingly uh, of the you know marathi natya sangeet uh, bal gandharva master krishna rao and all that and that's the only source of these recordings yes, anywhere yes. in the world probably probably <laughs> bengali theater tamil theater telugu theater then also early cinema uh, the saigal and the devika rani that era Oh, Sa- the KL Sa- KL Sagal. KL Sagal. Yeah, yes. I only know him from Delhi Belly because they sample his <laughs> voice in Sagal Blues. Yes, the song. Yeah, and the other you know Indian languages and voices of leaders like Gandhi's voice, uh, Tagore's voice, uh, Subhash Chandra Bose's speech from Tokyo, uh, and mind you, in Delhi, uh, in Chandni Chowk, if you go to that area, there are lots of Raddi Walas. and you'll find thousands and thousands of records even now and that's where i found this record of gandhi uh, which is probably the only record he made on a gramophone disc he gave a lot of radio broadcasts but on gramophone disc that was the only record he when he went to the round table conference or so uh, he was asked to say something mm-hmm. he said i will not talk about uh, politics i will talk about spirituality and so he spoke about his conception of god and so uh, gandhi spiritual message or something like that that's the name of the record and that's there uh, which we and it was found in chandni chowk under a heap of other records and the fellow was you know literally sitting on them uh, you know one putting their feet on another this thing so that is how these records languish with none of us even bothering as to how to rescue them how to uh, 
preserve them, digitize them, governments, uh, nobody takes initiative or interest uh, in doing uh, mm. any of this. So we, what we've done is probably a very small fraction of the restoration, but at least it creates a, I mean, every extant record cannot be rescued and protected, but at least a prototype, you know. And how does it have so many followers? How, how does, like... I don't know. I mean, uh, uh, we have, as I, we were talking earlier, uh, you so don't promote it at all? Not promoted it at all. This is probably the first podcast I'm even talking in such detail about this archive and the long backstory as to how it came, what was the inspiration and so on. Uh, the inspiration was that serendipitous uh, afternoon in the Mysore Palace archive where by chance I came across that file, box file of uh, letters and Gohar Jan's reference there, uh, which totally mm. changed my life, uh, I must say. So, uh, so this... Uh, digitization was done but after that my idea was there's no point keeping it in my hard disk you know it should go out to the people at large so one was to put it on soundcloud free of cost so on soundcloud.com if you go to uh, and type archive of indian music uh, i think about 2000 tracks or something are already up uploaded there free of cost all these different categories and so can i for example as a musician go there and sample it in my stuff yeah, yeah it's yeah. all public use public use it would be good if they write to me or something and take permission at least give credits uh, yeah I'm not even asking for but it. that's great because you know what what you've basically done is there's all these new uh startups right now and music apps who mm. basically create ethnic indian sample packs yeah or they send a musician to the field and they do a bunch of field recordings um, you know, and, and then they compile all of those. Yeah. But if if we can have ind indigenous sounds yeah. available to us, and you know, there's there's rap, there's hip hop, there's rock, there's so many pop, there's so many genres. Yeah. If we can actually get an archive and parse through it, like yeah, great yeah. diggers do, yeah. dig out the best samples that we want, give you the credit, you basically have access to Good. more samples than you possibly would need. And you don't have to generate it through AI. Yeah. You don't have to, the other issue in most hip hop is that everyone uses the same samples mm -hmm. because they're so less yes. because people yeah. have to do the digging. Correct. But if there's an archive, you can just pick it up. Correct. Correct.